and something we would have never thought of. And it might even be better than what you were thinking. Thank you. It might even be better, right? The other day, a couple weeks ago, we were on vacation with Helen and Rose. We were down in uh, 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 Williamsburg, Virginia. And while we're there on vacation, Alan gets a phone call and it's his buddy and he says, hey, I'm now working security for this one preacher that's traveling all over the U.S. He says, if you can get to this conference this weekend, he goes, I have six passes for you. I can get you in the backstage. You can meet all the speakers of the conference. It's going to be awesome. You should come. And I was so blown away by Alan's response. He said, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I was like, doesn't that sound like the hand of God? Like six, six tickets, backstage passes, meet all the glorified, anointed men and women of God, right? You know what Alan said? He said, God knew where I would be. And if he wanted me to be at that conference, I wanted to schedule this weekend. I was like, doesn't that make life so much easier yeah. if we would look at it like that? Rather than, oh my God, six tickets! Uh, see you there, Rebecca. We gotta go. Get on, right? And they run off, and now we're disappointed. We're like, who are we? We're just losers, I guess, you know? Right? And but they did it. They said, no, God has us here for this time, for this season. This is where we're at. And I was like, man, what a what a way to live. What a way to, what, what a way to just relax in God and say, God, I give you my life. You direct it. You know where I'll be. You know what the schedule is. You know you wrote all the days in your book. And I'm just walking with you, Jesus. Amen. And I don't have to get overwhelmed. You realize that Psalms 23 says, uh, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? He makes me lay down in the green grass. Yeah. It doesn't say you run around munching on everything. <laughs> it says you're laid down. Right? Alan and Rose were like, hey, we were invited to this conference. Let's just lay down right here. We're not gonna we're not gonna take advantage of even the conference because it's not what God wants at this time, because he knows my schedule. It says he leads me beside the still waters. But it doesn't say you drinking from him. Right? You know why? Because he's all you want. Amen. He's all you want. If we're satisfied in Jesus, man. Hallelujah. So I, I really I really liked what Angel shared. There is a there's a opportunity. Don't miss it. Don't miss the opportunities. Like we say, oh, sickness is an opportunity for healing. What if it's like got five testimonies wrapped up in it? Like I was sick, so I went to the doctor, and I told the doctor about Jesus, and then he didn't believe in nothing. Okay, so then I went and I got this person, and I talked here to the therapist, and then she bent my leg, and it popped, and Jesus healed it. And I went back to the doctor, and he became a Christian because he didn't believe in miracles, but now he does, right? I'm just saying, what if we, 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 we just want one miracle? And God says, what if I can multiply that? Amen. What if I can Amen. increase that? Right? Everybody, all the 5,000 people sitting there listening to Jesus, we just want one lunch. I just want one. Yeah. Jesus is like, you'd be amazed what I can do with one lunch. That's right, yeah. right? Let me multiply that. Right? I'll just take the leftovers. It feels like 12 baskets, right? So I just want the left leftovers from Jesus. But but let's let's say, God, let's let's believe him for to do more. Amen. There was a man one time, he said, I'm wrapping it up. There was a man one time, he prayed and he said, Lord. If you ever need me to talk to somebody and I'm not listening to you, just break my car down. Okay? Just let it break down. Right where it's at. Just let it run out of gas. Let it shut off. Whatever it does. He said, I had a good car for this. Okay? Jesus can break this thing down on a... On a <laughs> yeah, okay? Just like that. Right? And he says, my car broke down multiple times. And he said, every time my car broke down, he said, I wasn't like, you stupid car! <laughs> right? He would say, Holy Spirit, who is it today? Amen. Is it the tow truck driver? Is it the AAA gas delivery guy? Is it the person whose phone I'm going to use over at that house? Is it the next guy who stops to pick me up or, or help me or jump my car? Who is it, Jesus? Who is it? Amen. And he said, you know what? I didn't get bitter about my car breaking down. Amen. Like, we get, we, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we get so worked up in the moment that we're like, what's my car breaking down for? When you could be a testimony. Right then, right there. Asking God, say, Lord, use my life. Do you see what I'm, do you see what I'm saying here? Do you see how it parallels? Yes. Where he says, Father, in this hour, glorify your son. Yes. The hour has come. Hallelujah. I brought glory to you here on the earth by completing the work you gave for me. Right? Hallelujah. So maybe part of your work is your transmission goes out. I don't know. Okay?
okay? And we all want to, God, the devil robbed me. Well, then multiply it into multiple blessings. Amen. Right? We just want a new transmission. But what if it's a tow truck driver? Rebecca and I, one time, we locked our keys in our car. I, I know, I know. I mean, it's the last story. Okay. We locked our keys in our car. We went on vacation. We ain't doing this this time, honey. Okay? We went down to Philadelphia. We jumped in an airplane, and when we got back to Philadelphia to get in our car, we couldn't find our keys. They're somewhere in another country, probably. Okay? It was not good. So we called a tow truck driver who came to Philly. Well, he got the gospel the whole way back to Reading. Right? That's called a captive audience. I paid him to listen to me, really, is what I was doing, okay? But, but he came the whole way back to Reading. And I, you know what? Take advantage of the opportunity. Yes. God, why are you disrupting my life? Because I want you to take a new turn. I want you to find an opportunity. All right? So let's do that. Let's allow God to redirect our lives and not become overwhelmed and worried by it. Right? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. God, I thank you for each person here. I thank you that you said in your word that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And we are good people because we've been made new in you. Not because of our works or our actions, but God, you are directing our footsteps. You even brought us to this place. You brought us right here today, right now. It's not an accident that we're here. God, if somebody's car broke down on the way here, it's not an accident. Their car broke down. God, you're leading us and guiding us by your spirit. And Father, we, we just move our hearts. Show us how much you love and care about us. And take us through some of those situations and then bring us back to that, that place with you that we were from the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to let you know if you brought any tithes or offerings with you, there is a offering box in the back. Okay, you can drop some finances right on the corner of the sound desk. But we also have snack here tonight. Relax, y'all. This is not a race. Okay, let's go. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> be blessed. Be encouraged, one another. Hallelujah. If you do need prayer for anything, we are happy to pray. Right, Angel? We're happy to pray. We're still happy to pray. But we're going to ask God for His answer. Amen? If you need prayer, I'll stay up here for a few minutes. I'll be happy to pray with you. Other than that, you are dismissed. God bless you. Have a great evening.